In this video, let's talk about embossed 3D textures on NURBS type of surfaces. You can see I've got a texture on both sides of this, but there is one key difference. Uh, here, you can tell that no matter what the angle of the surface is, our texture is always going in the same direction along it, whereas on this surface, the texture remains normal to the surface. So these are always up and down, and these are always normal to the surface. If the surface is curving this way, then the lines coming off of my texture are curving parallel or perpendicular to that. So we have the same texture, more or less, but with very different characteristics. And you may desire one or the other, depending on how you're going to manufacture this or uh, for many other reasons. So let's go through how we can make each kind of texture. I'll start with the new part. So in this uh, new part environment, let's focus on generating something that has a NURBS kind of surface to it. I'll begin sketching on the XY plane. And of course, the easiest way to NURBS would be through a spline. I'll set these to be equal. I'll also set these lines to be equal. And I'll arrange my spline in an interesting way. From here, for demonstration purposes, I'll leave this unconstrained because all I need is a crazy surface. But I will emphasize that when you're making a real part that's not for demonstration purposes, it is best practice to fully constrain your sketch always. Let's go with uh, a plane, and I'll move that out about, oh, let's go a distance of six. Activate a sketch. We'll uh, project these sketch elements here. And I won't make it that sharp of an angle. <clears throat> we'll run a loft between here and here. And to increase the complexity, I'll specify some tangents. So we should have a complex and interesting surface. And speaking of surfaces, I'll of course delete these planar faces that I don't really care about currently. So we've of course, oops, I missed one. We've of course uh, trimmed this into a this, an infinitely thin surface, so we are no longer solid. This is just an infinitely thin thing that we can use as a reference. From here. I'll create a hexagon pattern. I'll constrain this one hexagon. Give it a line length of 0.4 looks fine. Give this a horizontal. Make another rectangle. Also horizontal. And equal in size. Grab a perpendicular and make our construction line perpendicular. Ah, I'll give this a distance. Negative 0.1. And there's a good start for a, a hexagon lattice style pattern. I'll give this a reference here and another reference here. I can pull up my calculator and I can say 0.687 or horizontal reference dimension. We'll, we'll multiply that by 2 
And then I'll take this reference dimension and multiply that by two as well. So I've got the values 1.374 and 0.792. So those will be important values uh, going forward because we're going to create a lattice pattern of these hexagons. So first thing, I'll uh, create a pattern, right? We're going to go with linear pattern. I'll select my objects here. I can select a linear path, which uh, should be an axis. Or I can select it from the tree x-axis for spacing 1.374 as we've calculated and I'll do that in a change direction and I can add one more instance it looks like and then my linear path I'll also select that from the tree we'll go with the z-axis and then we'll say 0.792 and then, ooh, that's close, but our sketch does not move outside our surface, so we should be fine. I'll say OK to that. Now, I will preface this by saying patterning sketches like this turns really heavy really fast. So as we work, uh, we always can suppress the sketch to save rebuild time and then unsuppress it when we need to use it later. Next, let's thicken this surface. So we're gonna say surface and thicken. Point 0.1 is fine for my purposes. So we've thickened this to the amount of point 0.1, but I actually just want two surfaces, uh, one being offset from the other. So we'll make sure that this isn't a solid and we should be good there. Now I have the original surface and the surface that was created when I deleted face on the part, so I can delete face on one of my bottom surfaces and still have the original surface. Next, let's do an extrude. So of course I'll select my lattice sketch. And we're going to say to geometry and choose our top surface. Uh, I can delete the surface that I've just extruded to because I no longer need it. So we'll say surface, delete face. And then I can trim my model with this other surface. And you can see when I go to trim the model, I have these arrows that are pointing towards the direction of things that will be trimmed. So everything on this side of the surface will be trimmed. If I don't like that, I can reverse and trim everything on top but of course I want to do this side. So we're able to trim our model with the surface and now I can simply thicken my surface and I'll thicken it in the other direction. And I have been able to, oh, also I can delete face because I no longer need the surface that I've thickened. So you see I'm, I'm selecting my model face here and if I have that problem where I can't in the graphics display area uh, select the surface. I always can go to surfaces and faces and just select the face that I wish to delete from there. So I've, I've been able to create this pattern that is constantly going in one direction using surfaces. There is many ways to do this. This is one of probably many, many ways of doing this, but this will help if you want to injection mold something and you have to have your texture be able to come out of the mold, right? If, if these lines are running perpendicular to the surface, that really defeats the ability to uh, make it. So if you're injection molding or doing something similar, this is a great way to be able to make a texture down a nerve surface that you know you can get out of your mold still. But maybe we do want to have this pattern be normal to our... Uh, to our surface, right? We, we want these hexagons to come out in a normal fashion. Well, the, the solution for that is actually a lot simpler. I'll activate a sketch. We'll project a sketch. We'll maintain association. So we've been able to generate this sketch. We'll deactivate. 
do the same thing. Wrap. We select our face. And we're able to wrap this, no problem. And of course, when we wrap, our hexagon patterns stay normal to the surface. So th those are two ways of being able to generate these textures. And of course, each way has its pros and cons. I'd say that this way is much more manufacturable as a rule of thumb. This way I think is cooler. <laughs> so uh, hopefully this is helpful. If it was, please subscribe to the Libre channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.